cast aside Who'll tend the garden when none of your roses still Hi, I'm Sarah from Weeders Digest and today we're here in my shop, Saipua and I thought that together we could make a few arrangements uh, so first we're going to do a simple hand-tied bouquet for a jar and then second we'll do a kind of Ikebana inspired simple arrangement. So let's get started. So when I start with, when I start to make an arrangement or um, a bouquet, I like to work in my hands instead of working right in the vase because it kind of gives me more control as to where the flowers are going to be placed. Um, and I like to start with the biggest flower that I'm going to use and then build around that. I'm going to start by maybe picking a really bright pink flower to go next to this peony. And maybe we'll, we'll grab one of these ranunculas here. Everybody knows that I really love ranunculas. I have some gorgeous anemones in the shop today. So we'll start with this triumvirate of flowers for our handheld bouquet. I'm going to use some scabiosa or pincushion flowers. And these guys are really leggy, so I'm going to kind of split them up a little bit. As I go also, I'm going to remove leaves from the bottoms of the stems because you don't want anything with leaves on it below the waterline. So I'm kind of tucking smaller flowers in between the three flowers that I've got going on here. As I'm, as I'm working here, in terms of color, we've got obviously a lot of contrast between the really bright pink flower and then the lighter flowers on the edge. When I make a bouquet, I like to think about each flower relating to the next flower. So this dark pink flower, I'm going to start working out from here and keep the lighter flowers on this edge. So I'm going to grab some of this really beautiful crab apple. The thing that's really lovely about crab apple is that, or any flowering branch, is that you can pretty much go out to your yard and cut it um, this time of the year. So if you were to go about making an arrangement like this yourself at home, what you would think about doing maybe um, is going to your florist and perhaps buying a few single stems, like let's say, it looks like in here, I'm going to have a one anemone, one peony, and two ranunculus, um, and then a few scabiosas, and then filling in those flowers with things that you find in your own yard. I have one really special ranuncula up here that I want to add into this bouquet. Um, this is a quick tip I'll, I'll give you. So sometimes ranunculus, the weight of the flower is so heavy that it'll cause the stem to kind of go wah, wah, like that. Um, and yet it's still getting water up into the head because the head still looks pretty moisturized. Um, so what I'll do with a, with a fragile flower like this that I want to get a few more days out of, I'll also thread it down through this bouquet. And basically the other flowers will provide a support for that wonky head and we'll get a few more days out of this really beautiful flower. I'm going to clip the stems for this hand tied um, about an inch up from where I see the bottom of the vessel. So I mean I just hold it next to it and kind of estimate. And then I'm going to grab some string and tie this off so it kind of you know maintains the shape of the bouquet that we so painstakingly put together today. And then once it's in the base, also I can kind of go around and do a little bit of tweaking, pull some things apart. I think we did pretty good. What do you think? Yeah. All right. So um, I want to talk a little bit more, or play a little bit more with this really beautiful um, crab apple. So I grabbed this brown bottle from the kitchen. Um, it's really average, just kind of plain, simple brown bottle, but I thought that um, it would contrast really great with these pink crabapple branches. Anytime I have flowering branches, what I'm going to do is split the stems uh, so that the branch can absorb more water up into it. Uh, what I'm going to do is take my clippers, and you can also do this with a knife, and just kind of work my way, split it, and then kind of work the stem a little bit, so exposing more surface area for water to be absorbed. And they're going to kind of create this structure, this base, for us to add two other flowers to. So I want to keep this arrangement really simple, kind of in the style of Ikebana. Um, I'm going to grab a pale pink peony, kind of low to the, close to the base. And then I'm going to offset those two elements with a darker flower. Again, um, we're going to pick a ranunculus. And I want this ranunculus to be 
just a little bit taller than that peony, kind of. Perfect, ta-da. So you have three really simple elements together, working in tandem, making a beautiful arrangement in an old brown bottle. Lastly, I thought maybe I'd show you how to create a simple tape lattice over the top of a vessel should you be a little weary of arranging flowers in your hand. So what we're going to do is take some thin masking tape and just lay it over the top of your base to kind of create a lattice. And this is kind of in place of a flower frog or in place of chicken wire, which also makes, a, makes for a good structure. Once you've got your lattice in place over the top of your vessel. You can go ahead and put flowers down in through the lattice and that tape lattice will help keep your flowers in place as you start to arrange them. Thanks so much for watching our video today here at Saikua. I'll see you next week for Weeders Digest and certainly if you're ever in Red Hook come by and say hello. It'll be me that you turn to but me.